Let's make a cityscape inspired by the artist Paul Clay. Here is a painting made by Paul Clay, and here is an example of our project. First, let's learn about the artist Paul Klee. Paul Klee was a German-Swiss artist who lived from 1879 to 1940. He is most known for his style, using geometric shapes to make up an artwork. Remember, geometric shapes are shapes that we can name, like a square, circle, triangle, or rectangle. His paintings are mostly influenced by the art movements of Cubism, Expressionism, and Surrealism. Cubism is an art style that uses basic shapes to make up a picture. Notice how Paul Clay used basic shapes to make up his self-portrait. This is a cityscape painting by Paul Clay. Let's name the shapes we recognize in this painting. Like a circle, a square, a triangle, a rectangle. Here are more cityscape and castle paintings by Paul Clay. So let's make a cityscape inspired by Paul Clay. Here's an overview of our directions. For your supplies today, you will need paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, coloring materials, and a ruler. The ruler is optional, you don't have to have it. First, we'll start by drawing a castle line across the page in pencil. Then we'll draw at least eight horizontal lines and five vertical lines inside your cityscape shape. Then we'll draw more lines to create shapes inside your cityscape, like triangles, diamonds, and smaller rectangles. Then we'll draw a circle for a sun or moon in your sky. After, we'll outline everything with a black marker and then use your choice of coloring materials to add color. We'll try to balance our colors by spacing them out and using contrast. To make your Paul Clay cityscape, you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and some coloring materials. I will be using a variety of things like markers, crayons, and maybe even a little bit of paint but you can use any supply that you have at home. So to get started, I'm going to draw the top of my city scene all the way across my paper. I'm going to use what we like to call a castle line or a line that goes up and down. You can make your buildings tall, short, long, wide. That is totally up to you. And here's a reminder for the types of lines we'll be using. So we have a line that goes up and down. This is called vertical. We have a line that goes from side to side that is called horizontal. And we also have a straight line that's called a diagonal. This is a line that goes at an angle. It can go like this or it can go like this. So this is a diagonal. So I'm going to go horizontally across my paper. And I want to include a variety of heights or different heights. So I'm making some of my buildings tall, some of my buildings shorter. Also, I can include different tops to my buildings. So here I'm making a dome shape using a half circle shape. So I'm making a horizontal line that goes across and a vertical line that goes down. The top of your city scene does not have to match mine exactly. It can have different shapes, different heights, just as long as it goes from one side of your paper all the way to the other. Now that I've drawn the top of my cityscape, I'm going to draw some vertical lines that go up and down to break up the space in my cityscape. So I'm just going to continue this line here and make it go all the way to the bottom of the paper. If you have a ruler or something that's a flat edge, 
you can use that to help you with this step in the project, but you don't have to use one. So I'm going to draw at least eight vertical lines to break up the space. More than eight is fine, but you probably don't want more than 15 or you will have way too many little spaces to color in and it will take you a very long time. Let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I'm going to draw at least five lines that are horizontal. So that means that they are going across my paper. So this could be from any point that you want it to start. I'm gonna start at the bottom of my paper, draw a straight line that is a horizontal line. Now I might move my ruler up a little bit. There's two, three, I need to fit a couple more. Here I can do four. I will do one here, five, six, seven. I'm just looking for shapes that are big, that could be broken up by a line. Now that I've drawn vertical lines and horizontal lines through my cityscape, I'm going to add some geometric shapes on the inside of these rectangles. So I am going to add a triangle here. Maybe I'll do another one here. I could also add the shape of an X by going from corner to corner. And I don't wanna do this in every space, but just scatter it throughout. So a little bit here and a little bit there will just give your cityscape more variety. You could even add a square or rectangle inside to make it look like a window, maybe a tall rainbow line to make it look like a door. Can use any shape that you can think of. So hearts, stars, diamond, but remember that you don't have to fill every space with a shape, just some. Okay, so now that I have drawn out my cityscape, I'm going to draw a circle in the sky for the sun, or this could also be for the moon. That is up to you. Now I am ready to outline my cityscape with a black marker. So I'm going to carefully trace over my pencil lines. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up my video. Remember that I don't really draw this fast, so you should take your time. finished my outlining, I'm going to erase any extra pencil lines that are showing through. Now I am ready to add color to my cityscape. So I am going to color using one color at a time. So like with the purple, I'm coloring in one shape at a time. I'm not gonna take a color and go all over my cityscape because then I would just have a purple cityscape. I want to have a variety of colors and like Paul Clay, balance out my colors so that they all stand out. So I'm gonna move over here now to color in another shape, 
purple. I'm not going to put a purple right here, 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 or here. So I'm going to use a variety or a lot of colors with this. It's easy to color in neatly if you color a border around the shape and then fill it in using lines of color so that you're not going back and forth and go outside the line. So again, that's make an outline of the color on the inside of the shape and then fill in your shape with color. Now I'm going to move on and use another color. The shapes on my cityscape are colored in. I am going to work on the sky and I drew a circle in my sky and this is actually going to be the moon. It's a glowing yellow orange moon but yours could be a sun or a moon. That is totally up to you. I'm going to use watercolors to paint my sky. Now you can use any material that you have but if you are painting at home you will need a water cup, a paintbrush, and your paints. Remember when you're using watercolors that you need to wake up your color by tapping it and swirling it with your brush lightly. You never want to press your brush hard into the paint because you will ruin its bristles and you always want it to have a pointy tip. I'm going to paint my night sky with a little bit of blue and black. So I'm going to use blue first. After I paint with blue, I'm going to add a little bit of black to it to make it look like a night sky. Okay, so I am done with my Paul Clay cityscape. I hope you had fun today learning about the artist Paul Clay and using vertical and horizontal lines to create a cityscape using geometric shapes. I can't wait to see what you create.